Brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. On Monday, Francis issued a new document titled Towards Full Presence, a Pastoral Reflection on Engagement with Social Media. The document is a warning aimed squarely at the faithful, who are largely not paying attention to documents issued by Rome, which is why it'll fail. But the message is this. Stop listening to divisive Catholic social media, and especially to bishops and priests who use social media and their public positions to disagree with Rome. They never say it that way, but that's what they're doing. The Vatican and her lay allies used Bishop Strickland's recent comments about rejecting Francis's destruction of the church as a launching point to promote their message in an obviously coordinated way. Various outlets all released similar articles like the one I reported on this past Monday, all within a a day or so of each other, where Bishop Strickland was targeted by America Magazine and labeled as a schismatic for telling the truth about Francis. Several articles were released in the days leading to this document's release, suggesting that they all knew what message they were promoting and that a document was forthcoming. Let's get a closer look at it. Before we do, let's check in with Packa Papa Francis to see what words of wisdom and love he has for the faithful while we all consider listening only to him and uh, instead of listening to dissident voices who reject him. On Pentecost, Francis took his usual pot shots at traditional Catholics, since he can't help himself and he always goes after meanie headed trads whenever there is a sufficiently large audience watching. And there's none larger than on Pentecost. Quote, Let us ask ourselves, am I docile to the spirit, or is my way of practicing the faith stuck stubbornly to doctrines, the letter which are just expressions that are sometimes cold? Am I quick to judge? Do I point fingers, slam doors in the face of others, considering myself a victim of everyone and everything? End quote. Ah, yes, sticking stubbornly to the letter of doctrines that are sometimes cold. Thanks, Francis, I hate it, especially when you suggest that the doctrines of the church are sometimes cold, here almost certainly meaning cold like a frigid, cold heart devoid of the light of Christ, because they're not accompanying after all. But that's synodality for you. Since the doctrines of the faith are open to revising in the name of listening, dialogue, and accompaniment. Another example of this comes from an audience Francis gave in Rome in the past few days, where he voluntarily brought up again the case of the young woman who came to an audience with a couple of converts that she helped guide into the church, which Francis then chastised her publicly for with the whole world watching. Yes, he chastised a young woman for helping con- two people convert, helping them come home to the, f- to the true faith. He called it proselytization. You might remember this. Francis recently spoke about it again, and he even admits that he, what he was doing. Quote, Our missionary proclamation is not proselytizing. I stress this much, but sharing a personal encounter that has changed our lives. Without this, we have nothing to proclaim, nor a destination to walk together. I had in this a bad experience in a youth meeting some years ago. I was coming out of the vestry, and there was a lady. Very elegant, you could also see that she was very rich, with a boy and a girl. And this lady who spoke Spanish says to me, Father, I am happy because I converted these two. This one is from such a place, and this one is from such another place. I got angry, you know, and I said, You didn't convert anything. You disrespected these people. You didn't accompany them. You proselytized. And that's not evangelizing. She was proud for converting. Be careful to make a clear distinction between apostolic action and proselytizing. We do not proselytize. The Lord never proselytized. End quote. Prior to Francis running the church, I had never heard spreading the gospel referred to as proselytizing by anyone except atheists. It's kind of a red flag for me when an alleged believer does it because proselytization is just a way of sliming the missionary zeal of those who take the time to bring souls to Christ. And how does he know that woman was rich? After all, she may have just been dressed appropriately for a meeting with the Pope. Go figure. Francis's preferred way of bringing people into the church is to merely share people's positive experiences with the faith of others, while, of course, simultaneously telling non-Catholics that they should just be the best whatever they are already. He's done this publicly. He's said this publicly multiple times. He does that pretty regularly. It's almost as if he doesn't want the gospel to be spread and souls to enter the church. But this isn't limited to those faithful laity who possess missionary zeal either. No, Francis just a couple of days ago issued a document giving guidelines to Catholics who use social media. Most of the document is what you would expect. 
act with charity on social media, love thy neighbor, you represent the church, yada, 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 stuff that really, honestly, shouldn't need repeating. Most people kind of know that. Although, judging from comment sections, sometimes people do need to be reminded of that. But sometimes a document that is written as a subtle warning to specific people is exposed by Francis's allies for what it, it really is, because that's what this, we're dealing with here. This is a threat to certain bishops to fall in line. Such is the case with Francis's new document of social media, as made by Christopher Lamb. Mr. Lamb is a journalist for the UK's Catholic newspaper, The Tablet. Now, once upon the time, The Tablet was a paper that promoted the Catholic faith in a rather faithful way. You will sometimes see traditional outlets online quoting old issues of The Tablet. Now it's an outlet for modernism and other progressive ideas calling itself Catholic. It's a shame what has happened to that paper, but Mr. Lamb shared a single excerpt from the new document by Francis on social media, followed by another article written by a Catholic outlet that really nobody who wasn't exposed to that outlet immediately should even know about, but it was threatening Bishop Strickland. So let's start with the excerpt from Francis's new document. Quote, The responsibility to minister to one's community, especially for those in public leadership roles, cannot become secondary to promoting one's personal opinions from the public pulpits of digital media, end quote. Objectively true, but this is of course aimed at Bishop Strickland, Bishop Athanasius Schneider, and other bishops and priests who use social media to correct Francis's errors and have become very effective at doing so. The other side, the uh, we'll call it the pro-modernism, pro-Vatican II, pro-Francis and synodality side of things has had little success in recent years. The side of Catholic orthodoxy is on the rise, and, and honestly, they know that. Now, that having been said, Mr. Lamb has immediately followed that little nugget of truth from the document with an article that shows what this is really about. It was written a week before the release of the new document, and it details dangers of the use of social media from port prelates and such. It's part of a sudden flurry of new articles that chastise specifically Bishop Strickland for his use of social media as a warning to the faithful. Clearly, someone tipped off the pro-Francis media that a social media document was coming and gave them all pointers because, as I pointed out Monday in a video, the Jesuits are trying to destroy Bishop Strickland. Now it looks more like Rome is itself coming after him. It makes you wonder if there's more action coming in the future. Here's an excerpt from that article shared by Mr. Lamb so you can see what I'm talking about here. The outlet is called Go Rebuild My House. You ever heard of it? Probably not. I never did before this. It's the official website of Sacred Heart University and their newspaper. Why is a college newspaper getting the attention of a writer for the tablet? Good question. This article and this message is aimed at younger people who lean heavily towards traditional Catholicism and a more conservative Catholicism more broadly. The message they, they are being sent is that Bishop Strickland and bishops like him are bad and to be avoided. Quote, The German church's synodal path has sparked plenty of talk about a possible schism or even a second reformation. But while plenty of criticisms can be made of der synodal way, a potentially more severe threat to unity is looming in Texas. Joseph Strickland, the Bishop of Tyler in Texas, recently told his almost 116,000 followers on Twitter that although he believes Pope Francis is the Pope, he rejects Francis's quote, program of undermining the deposit of faith. He added, follow Jesus with the implication being that somehow the Pope isn't. Bishop Strickland's tweet was an attempt to distance himself from Patrick Coffin, a hard-right podcaster who rejects Francis's elevation as the successor of St. Peter. Coffin had arranged for Bishop Strickland to send a message to an online summit, and the bishop wanted to clarify his position. The Texan prelate has in the past endorsed social media content attacking the Pope and has tweeted that Cardinal Arthur Roach, the Holy See's top liturgy official should, quote, return to the Catholic faith. Nicely done, Bishop Strickland. <laughs> For a bishop or any Catholic, this is dangerous territory. The church's catechism makes it plain that the Pope is, quote, the visible source and foundation of the unity both of the bishops and of the whole company of the faithful, and defines schism as, quote, the refusal of submission to the Roman pontiff or of communion with the members of the church subject to him. This case points to the dangers posed by social media to the church's communion and begs the question of why certain bishops in the United States have been strong, have taken strong public stances against the German synod while staying silent about what is going on in their homeland. End quote. 
You see, they think Bishop Strickland should focus on their brand of politics and enforcing that in America instead of taking on the Pope's errors. Now, the article goes on to explain all the ways that Bishop Strickland is, not, is in fact, a real danger to the faith. Not the German Synod, though they're not great, too. But that article explicitly calls Bishop Strickland a schismatic. They're trying to convey to college-age readers that Bishop Strickland, and by extension, bishops like him, like Schneider, Vigano, and others, are the real schismatics and are dangerous to the faith, meaning to your eternal salvation. Again, why was a well-respected Catholic establishment writer sharing such material from an outlet no one who isn't a student at that campus has ever even heard of? I haven't thought about my college newspaper in years. And I wrote for the thing. And yet this writer takes the time to share material from a college newspaper. It's very strange, especially since the same message was given by America Magazine recently, which I recounted in my video from a couple of days ago. America Magazine has a substantially larger reach, it should go without saying, than that college newspaper does. But it bore the same message almost exactly. Bishop Strickland is bad. Bishop Strickland is like Vigano. Vigano has been discredited. Stop following them because they're bad. That's the message from Rome, now expressed in two articles written within a couple of days of each other, right before a Vatican document on social media usage is released. That short excerpt from the document by the Vatican is followed up by an attack against all dissident Catholic media, including you if you say things out of step with Rome on Facebook or Twitter or anywhere else, let alone in a podcast or a blog. From the document itself, quote, The Christian style should be reflective, not reactive, on social media. Therefore, we should all be careful not to fall into digital traps hidden in content that is intentionally designed to sow conflict among users by causing outrage or emotional reactions. We must be mindful of posting and sharing content that can cause misunderstanding, exacerbate division, incite conflict, and deepen prejudices. Unfortunately, the tendency to get carried away in heated and sometimes disrespectful discussions is common with online exchanges. We can all fall into the temptation of looking for, quote, the speck in the eye of our brothers and sisters by making public accusations on social media, stirring up divisions within the church community, or arguing about who among us is the greatest, as the first disciples did. Wow. The problem of polemical and superficial and thus divisive communication is particularly worrying when it comes from church leadership, bishops, pastors, and prominent lay leaders. These not only cause division in the community, but also give permission and legitimacy for others, likewise to promote similar type of communication. In the face of this temptation, often the best course of action is not to react or to react with silence so as not to dignify this false dynamic. It is safe to say that this kind of dynamic does not build up. On the contrary, it causes great harm. Thus, Christians are called to show another way. End quote. In other words, Rome wants you to stop listening to shows like this one to stop following Bishop Strickland and bishops like him on social media and, in general, consume edifying content that promotes the Vatican message. Remember, by the way, that's not apologetic content, either. It's not content trying to get people to convert. No, channels like How to Be Christian or Census Fidelium aren't going to cut it since we now live in the non-proselytizing synodal church of the New Advent, where we reduce the faith to our lived experience, instead of telling people the hard truth about Christ and the Gospel including the necessity of Christ and his church for their salvation. We're not in that business anymore because that would be proselytizing, and that's ha bad apparently. I'll have a link to the document in today's show notes at returntotradition.org if you want to read it. YouTube is clamping down on links in general and videos, so I can't post it here. The document is again called Towards Full Presence, a Pastoral Reflection on Engagement with Social Media. And it's less a pastoral reflection and more of a warning to the faithful about your favorite social media voices, those dressed up in pastoral language. But first and foremost, among those are to be avoided, apparently, are bishops who reject Francis's farcical message of synodality and universal salvation in favor of, you know, the Catholic faith. Anyone who doesn't fall in line with Rome online is to be avoided, is their clear message. What that looks like in practice, I don't know. Will bishops try to enforce this, though? Will it simply be ignored? I'm not sure, but I'm betting it's going to be largely ignored. Let me know what you think about this in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So does sharing this on social media. That helps a lot, too. As always, pray for the church, especially going into the month of June. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.